I'd like to welcome my panel, uh, Anna Karin Ramsjöld, Vice President Corporate Sustainability at Vattenfall. Ella Jonsson joining us uh, via Lenk, uh, Innovation Manager, Swedish Lapland v Visitors Board. And Helena Bjerregård, you are State Architect at Boverket, the National Agency for Housing, Building and Planning. Ella, you are in the north. Uh, let's start with you. What's going on in northern Sweden right now? Set the scene for us. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to be here today. <clears throat> well, as you saw in the in the movie that we just watched, uh, lots of things are going on. So it's not something that we are planning for. It's actually happening right now. So huge investments are underway. Uh, and uh, we need to do a lot of things. And in my work as an innovation manager for the big project that is called the North Sweden Green Deal, the part that uh, handles attraction uh, is what I work with. And uh, my main target group is the 14 municipalities in uh, the northernmost part of Sweden. You know, we are introducing new methods, new innovation methods, new ways of working that is completely new for the public sector in order to meet the huge demands that uh, now are sort of in focus for the municipalities. So we have been doing a lot of prototypes, a lot of user tests, always with the end user, the lifestyle migrant in focus. So basically you can say that the whole of our region is uh, currently a giant innovation arena where we are, as you said, just uh, learning as we go along because we need to do things differently because we need to, to grow with as much as 100,000 new inhabitants. We were uh, we were speaking to Brussels yesterday, uh, and yes. uh, Breakthrough Energy was saying that Sweden should think about the Nordics, and the Nordics should think about Europe, and Europe should think about transatlantic, the transatlantic. And now yes. we're narrowing down to uh, the Nordic of s the nor northern part of Sweden. Talk yes. to me about that dance. How do we do regional and national and collaborations? Well, I mean, I think that is, we need to collaborate a lot uh, more. Um also in, internally in our region, we have learned during this year that we need to talk a lot more to each other to understand the bigger picture. And I think also uh, we were talking about the sense of urgency. We cannot do this big transition on our own. We need support from uh, the national uh, leadership and we need support from, from the EU uh, uh, arena as well. So we need to do this together because things that is happening here in the north right now is actually in the forefront globally. So we are doing things that will help the, the globe uh, to work better with the, the industry in the future. So if I hear you correctly, you can do both. You can both be very regional as well as a, a global outlook. Yes, absolutely. And I think a glo global outlook is uh, definitely what we need to use in this uh, transition that we are doing. And we are looking a lot uh, into that. And uh, we think that more part of the new inhabitants here in our region will come from other countries. And we see that already uh, with the with the plant, the, the battery factory in Sheleftio, and we see that in Budem with the H2 Green Steel. And we expect that also at LKAB when they move along with their new big project. So and next week we are going to the Netherlands uh, on uh, one of the biggest immigrant uh, fairs in Europe to present this region for the first time all together uh, uh, to, uh, and, and that is also a prototype. We are trying to, you know, presenting a new concept, uh, presenting new possibilities. Uh, and we look forward to see what we get in return. And we have already a lot of post positive uh, indicators that people are really interested in actually moving here. Well, let's dive into that in a little bit. I hope we have enough time. I'd like to uh, introduce the panel that's here in the studio with us today. Helena, thank you for coming. What's your perspective and your angle at the uh, Nordic wonder? 
Um, I'm the state architect working at the National Agency for Housing, Building and Planning, but I'm also the chair of the Council for Sustainable Cities and our commission from the government, 12 state agencies working together in this council, uh, is to support especially the citizen communities in the northern part of Sweden. And what does that have to do with innovation, one might think. But I can see that transforming the citizen communities, that's uh, really in, in the heart of innovation. Uh, we have you know, transport systems, uh, places to live, you mentioned schools, hospitals. We saw in the movie that uh, a lot of people are going to move to northern Sweden and we need attractive living environments to make them want to move there. And they're very conscious about that this is a, a sustainable environment also. So I see that every innovation that we do will take place in a city and community. And also citizen communities are about people, people moving to northern Sweden in this case, people wanting attractive, sustainable, inclusive living environments. And that is what we are supporting the, the citizen communities with. In northern I, Sweden. I'm getting flashbacks from the beautiful 90s movie with Kevin Costner, uh, Build It and They Will Come. Talk to me about the timeline. Do you build in preparation for, or do you wait for people to come and you build along the way? How does the practicalities of, of this work? Always when you work with city planning, building cities, you, 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 you work on the whole timeline at all levels at the same time. You have an existing city or a living environment in the, in the countryside where people live and you need to transform this. You need to you know, uh, develop this environment in, in some way. And in this case, we need to develop it so it's attractive, so it will attract 100,000 people actually to, to move there and to stay there. So you're hoping for build it and they will come. Uh, Annika, you are, uh, there's no coincidence that you're here with us today because obviously electricity and energy in that infrastructure is a key part uh, of this transition specifically, but also if we take the learnings from this uh, and, uh, and uh, um, extrapolate that to other countries. Tell us about your view. Well, it's like you said, I mean, it's fantastic all these new things that are happening, the innovation up north, but it will require a lot of electricity. And so far, northern Sweden have really been an exporter, talking about sort of how do we regionally then support the rest of, of Sweden also with electricity and maybe even export it ex externally to, to other countries. Now, this electricity will be needed in the north for the battery factories, for the manufacturing of fossil free steel and so forth. And so the, the electricity that is produced in the northern part of Sweden will be used there. So we will not be able to really export to the rest uh, of Sweden or the rest of the world. And on top of that, the, we will need so much more that we will, it's not even enough with what we have there. We also need even more. So there, this Electrification that will be needed uh, will help us to tackle the climate challenges. It will help us to get new job opportunities, also to create very interesting environment, both when it comes from job opportunities and so forth. But it will not go unnoticed. So somehow there, there will, we will see a lot of more onshore wind farms, offshore wind farms. Maybe if we look uh, way into the future, maybe even uh, small uh, nuclear reactors. And for those who haven't dived into the exact plan, how do you talk about the next year, 18 months, five years, 10 years in terms of electricity? Uh, how does it communicate it? How do you co-create? Uh, co because this topic today is not only about what's actually going on in northern Sweden, but also the collaborative element of making that happen. Exactly. And I think the, the new way that we or, or era that we're moving into will, like you said, require uh, collaboration. Because if now LK, the prerequisite for LKAB to, to open up even more mines and for SSAB to produce the fossil free steel or Northwall to get access to it, it has to be planned while we at the same time secure the electricity, secure the infrastructure. You talked about securing the competence that is needed. And all of that means that we need to collaborate. We need to have joint timelines. We need to have very clear targets. And I think in the 
We have a very good example of how it works to collaborate with the project Hybrid, the joint venture between SSAB, LKAB and Vattenfall, where we really set a joint target. We wanted to create fossil-free value chains for steel and then set a joint time plan. But when it comes now to build out, we already have, like I said, access of electricity in the northern part. We are constantly building new things. So last summer we had the inauguration of Block Lead and Fever Barrier, a large uh, onshore wind farm. Uh, so, so things are happening, uh, but we need to plan uh, also, like you said, when it comes to building cities, we need to have the long term view, which is that we need to double the uh, capacity of electricity in Sweden in order to mm. take tackle this. Not uh, a small task. Not a small <laughs> task, but it, you need to do. But what I think is sometimes in the debate, I have a feeling that everyone feels, oh, ooh, it's all going to come at the same time. But of course, this is going to be a mm. gradual change, meaning that we can jointly take the steps and develop and evolve all the different areas in parallel. Uh, and what does the Swedish Energy Agency say about this? It's a very good question. I, I think it's very interesting to hear you you talk about the possibilities here. And I think as, as an agency, first of all, we do have a lot of research and innovation programs that we are. We have a lot of open calls. We do have regional programs where we can share our knowledge, where we have groups, where we trying to facilitate uh, the exchange of, of knowledge between partners. And I think it's very interesting every time that we have an open call for, for research or innovation project we actually get to hear your voices, we get to hear your suggestions, and we get to involve you and, and ourselves in a dialogue with, with actors who are actually out there making the difference. So trying to read between the lines, the uh, two main, uh, as our minister yesterday told us, uh, not challenges but possibilities, mm -hmm. are uh, the electrification and electricity in the, and the renewables as well as more energy, uh, electricity, and the other is talent and people. Uh, Ella, if we start with you, what's your take on how to attract 100,000 people, the right people, uh, uh, and to, let's not, uh, let's address the elephant in the room. It's cold in Northern Sweden. <laughs> like, how does that play into this? Yes, um, it is. But I mean, we, I work for Swedish Lapland Visitors Board. Uh, we have um, uh, the opportunity to um, work with this North Sweden Green Deal because we have been working with the international marketing for this region for more than 20 years and we have done it very success successfully and we know that uh, uh, an attractive destination for traveling also attracts uh, lifestyle mi migration and that is what we are working on now so Many people that look to move uh, to this region, they love our lifestyle, they love our nature, they love the possibilities uh, with also nice challenges and, and fantastic opportunities if you are interested to actually work for a better future with, uh, with all the sustainable uh, actions that are taking place here in the industry. So, it's a combination of many different things that attract people to actually uh, move their focus from, uh, for instance, living in a very crowded uh, big city somewhere in Europe to actually see, but we, we cannot only go here for vacation, we can actually move here. And we have families that do that already. And many uh, municipalities have uh, had very successful uh, moving in uh, results already. Uh, just uh, during the last year. So that's re really uh, interesting to see. But of course, I mean, we need to, we need to be even more uh, focused to uh, have our common uh, sort of offer uh, that, and to make it as clear as possible. And I think uh, that is what we are going to, um, to focus on next week when we go to, to this big fair in, uh, in the Netherlands. Thank you. We d unfortunately don't have that much time. There, um, one last topic that I would like to talk about is conflicting goals. Uh, Helena, you raised your hand. You didn't know the question. But um, what type of regional conflicting goals uh, do we need to address and need to soberly look at? 
we have a lot of conflicting goals and uh, almost all conflicting goals are about land use. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to you know, think why it's about land use and, and do uh, real good planning to do that. And we need uh, to, to invite people to, to think and do together and place making projects and so on and do while we think. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, together with the Energy uh, Agency and Vinova and Farmas, we had the visions in the north. That was an open call where we invited multidisciplinary teams of culture and creativity and engineers and so on to think and do together with the citizen communities in northern part of Sweden. And we can continue to do this in a second phase. So uh, we need to do that. We need to you know, invent, we need to innovate, we need to plan, we need to do at the same time as we think, for example, as we have done in Visions in the North. And so that entails mitigating conflicting goals with collaboration, conversation, uh, yeah. lateral. Mm. Final words? No, but I, I think there are, like you said, a lot of conflicting goals, but the only way to solve them is that we really sit around the same table. And we all know that we cannot meet all the different demands. So it's going to be a, sort of a way of some, some interests need to stand back in some areas and others need to, to get more space. And that's just the way we need to have it. So, and I think coming back to what I said earlier, this transition is gon not going to go unnoticed. And it means that for the better cause, we know that uh, the climate and, and, and the planet is burning. So we need to do something about it. And then it's more a matter of how do we do it in the best possible way where we see most opportunities and then have negative impact on as few as possible. But we can only find it jointly and we need a joint plan. For that. Joint plans, sense of urgency, and we need 100,000 people to move to the north that uh, both love nature as well as can contribute to the green transition in terms of engineers and others. Fine. Thank you.